we've got the, a lot of the piping off of here. And I want to show you this up here. This wasn't sealing. And uh, this is all really dirty. And my intake pipe is filthy in there also. Now, I haven't had that a part ever, so that could have been from the people before. But I don't like this plastic. And what I do is I take some of this white grease and I put it on this stuff and the hose when I bolt them together. Because with the grease on there, what you'll do is uh, if you've got a leak somewhere, the grease will catch that dirt. And, and it helps seal things up better. So hopefully I've got that cured. So the next uh thing is i've got i've got to undo the bolts off this first turbo and uh because i i can't get this clamp off of here because of the exhaust manifold so i gotta undo these bolts and lift this first turbo off and then i can remove those this clamp and and then undo the one down here this is the pre-cooler and uh, so we're not going to use this anymore. And I can get a kit or whatever to cover this up and leave it there. Or I can just totally get rid of it. But somebody needs to tell me, somebody who's a cat guy, because I don't know really a lot about these engines. Uh, I know a lot about the old stuff, but not this new. So this is a water inlet into here. And I assume this hose either is exiting water or bringing it in. And you've got another one over here that comes in down there. And then it looks like this is an air, it looks like possibly an air bleed line that comes up. See, and it just goes to a small hose and then over to uh, looks like a bleed line that goes out up into the top radiator tank but I need somebody to tell me what this electric solenoid does does it regulate the water flow through this cooler and why do you need to to regulate that so in the comments below I want you to tell me how much boost do you think this is gonna make now, in my video where I showed the boost gauge, on a cold day in the wintertime or even in the summer, if it's a nice, cool, uh, high humidity or uh, high barometric pressure day, this thing will pump out right at 50 psi. Uh, most of the time in the summer, 45. So, tell me what you think the switchblade turbo is going to do. Um, this is going to be fun and interesting, but I've got a, a nasty oil leak under this and I'm I'm assuming I can't remember that this is the variable valve actuator assembly because on the back of the engine you've got a, an oil a pressure oil line that goes in there so I'm assuming I got to tear off the valve train to pull this up and reseal it. Superman strength. Super old man strength.
one turbo off. This is the look at this clamp. It would all bent. I don't know why, but it wouldn't come off. turbos because you got cast iron exhaust, cast iron center section, and cast iron compressor section way, way more than a, a compressor housing that's aluminum. Okay, so now I need to put on my big boy panties. See if I can hork this thing out of here. Out of the way, this is drain pipe is gonna give me fits. I don't, it's like it's just o ringed into the block, but I don't really want to take it out. Got dirt all around it. There we go. That'll do it. Oh, here we go. Oh. So this is the mounting for that second turbo bolts to the block so I've got to undo that looks like and get rid of that probably asking yourself why I don't have an impact wrench well because the boys rolled the compressor outside to get the blade off the nine so that's why <coughs> Oh, 
Oh, there's the ripper shanks right there. Right there in front of the lab cow, and then they're going to dump the blade between the truck and the scraper. And the reason I got to get rid of the shanks is that ripper's going to leak down when it's in the shop here, so I just don't, I don't know, I just don't want the shanks in here. It'll give us, I think, more room to get around if we have them off, so. That's looking cleaner, ain't it? I need the adept tape <laughs> to tell me what I got to do to reseal this. And I'm assuming I got to take the rocker boxes off and that this assembly here has oil in it. And this is for the variable valve actuators. So am I going to have to take off the rocker arms and everything to get to this okay I gotta get this stud out so I've double nutted it and I'm gonna take the impact gun and see if she'll come out there we go awesome piece of cake so you take that out okay now we gotta get rid of the pre-cooler out of here to get the manifold off so there's four bolts two in the bottom And two in the top. Ooh. You gotta unplug that solenoid wire and then it's ready to come out of there. And there's the bracket that holds it. Now all I gotta do is undo the hoses. Okay, now we're gonna get rid of this bracket okay got one more bolt to get out <laughs> well, these have, these things have, uh, I think, stainless inserts in the exhaust port. So this is going to be interesting to see uh, when I, if the gasket's separate. Yeah, the gasket's separate. I wonder if you're supposed to pull them. Yep, yeah, they're coming out. Look at that. I guess they're one piece or just stuck on there. Okay, this is the, the one of the pre-cooler hoses. And since this truck has a retarder, and this is the cooler it's uh, huge compared to a truck without one so it has to come clear back in here and dump in the back of the block whereas I think one without would dump in here so I was told that I might want to run uh, a hose the one from the pre-cooler on this end to the back of the head or I don't know that don't make any sense because this is on the intake this is on the intake side of the pump, but anyway, I was told for cooling, better cooling on number six, but since this is already in the back, I'm not going to worry about it. All this is going to go, get a plug in there. Uh, this one goes around to the intake on the water pump. This will come off and be gone too. So now all I got to do is get that bolt out of that bracket to get it off. It holds off. There we go. Okay. 
that's got to come out this is the hose this goes bye bye now we got to get rid of this one It's an O-ring fitting. That's cool. So just have to get an O-ring plug to go in it. Here we are. That is a big asshole. I guess I gotta start cleaning this mess up. Clean this side of the block off. So I'll get a gas scraper and go after that. Happy New Year's Day, everybody. Uh, hope you had a good time last night. Want to talk about some subscribers? Pay attention if you've got a hangover. Uh, Rod Parkinson from Falkland, BC. Rod's sending me something in the mail. I can't wait to get it. I'll leave a link below to this website where you can see some pictures of Rod when he was a much younger man. Now he looks like me. Kind of gray. Anyway, uh, check out those pictures. Rod's been in the trucking business for like ever. He's got some cool pictures. Um... Super 6954 from Manitoba near Carberry and Ty Frank from Alberta. Uh, I got some awesome subscribers in Canada. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, William Lowry from Orestes, Indiana. Hey William, are you anywhere near Logger Wade if you know who he is? I'm sure you do. Uh, me, myself, and I, Farmer from Western Pennsylvania. And Kelby Van Dyken from Montana. Kelby does kind of the similar, same work that I do. He works for farmers. Uh, and those are my uh, subscribers from the United States. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, Pat Sellers from the UK. Thanks, Pat. And uh, BJ Ware from South Africa. Uh, that's awesome that you're watching in South Africa. It's really cool. Love that. And Irez M from Israel. Uh, Irez uh, works on Jeeps and motorcycles and uh, loves to watch my fix-it videos. So that's what you've been watching right now is the fix-it video on the Kenworth. So the turbo should be here this week and on Friday's video you should be able to see that and we should be installing that on the Kenworth along with a lot of other repairs we're doing on it. We're going to be busy all week in the shop so we'll see you next Friday. It's gonna be huge. It's all right.